So glad to be uh, back before you again as we continue on in our sermon series called Tug of War. And hope that uh, week one was somewhat helpful to you in your relationships, uh, that maybe you went home and uh, told the person you were in relation, not just romantic relationship, uh, but you told them that in order to get their act together that they need to come this Sunday. And so <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you brought uh, the people you're in relationship with. And so today, though, today, though, we're going to take a little bit of a turn, but really still connected in our conversation on relationships as we talk about this tug of war. But today I want to talk to you on the theme and, 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 and please love me afterwards. Please, please, please love me afterwards. Um, the theme is you can't win every battle. <laughs> Some of you already checked out. You're already gone. You're already gone. You're already gone. Let's come back. Let's come back. Let's go. You can't win every battle. If you just do me a favor and just turn to somebody that's around you and tell them you can't win all of them. You can't win all of them. You can't win them all. 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 God, we are so grateful for the many ways that you speak biblical truths in our lives in very simplistic ways. You are not just a God that is so far off that you can't speak to the very things that we go through each and every day of our lives. You speak today through the lens of relationships. So bring to mind those relationships in our own lives. Not just, not just romantic, but just being in relationship with people. Speak to that place right now. Not just keeping in mind the people we are in relationship with, but how are we as individuals in relationship with other people. Don't just work on them, but work on us. But this is our prayer. In Christ's name we pray, amen, amen. You can't, you can't win every battle. As we continue on in our relationship series called Tug of War, today we're going to be taking a closer look into how we deal with the constant pull, the constant pull in relationships. So I said last week, I still say this week, that even healthy relationships come uh, with a constant back and forth. I mean, and, and how we handle this often determines the quality of our relationships. But the hardest part in the game of tug of war is that someone will inevitably win and somebody loses. And today is a reminder, today is a reminder, don't think about the other person, think, think about you. Today is a reminder that you don't have to win every single battle. And what better way to talk about this than looking at one of the most entertaining games of tug of war known as the Super Bowl. Tonight, it's a big game. How many of you are rooting for the Eagles? Right, it's about 12 of you, I got you. <laughs> now watch this, watch this. How many of you are rooting for the Chiefs? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. it must be a Midwest thing, must be a Midwest thing, right? Rihanna. Rihanna. How many of you are rooting for Rihanna? There you go. Thank you for that help, I appreciate it. Thank you for that help, thank you for your help. Now, truth is, none of them are the Detroit Lions, so I don't care if you're the Kansas City, Philadelphia, Rihanna, you know, if you're not from Seven Mile and Greenfield, doesn't matter who wins, doesn't matter who wins. But one thing you know, a tidbit of black history, this is the first time uh, that two African-American quarterbacks are starting uh, in a Super Bowl game. Now, again, I really don't care who wins. I just hope it's a good game because the truth is both teams have really had great seasons. 
I mean, the Chiefs were 16 and 3, the Eagles were 16 and 3, and fact check me if I'm wrong, but there has only been one NFL team that has ever gone undefeated and won the Super Bowl, which means, which means that even when you are the champion, that you're going to lose along the way. In fact, regardless of who you're rooting for, somebody's going to win tonight and somebody is going to lose. They will have a game plan, they will claw and they will scratch, and they will leave it all out there on the field. But at the end, let me somebody will win, and somebody will lose. And here's the truth. Even if you're not a Super Bowl fan or a fan of Rihanna, it's a familiar strategy for many of us because that is the way that we approach the conflict and the tug of war in our relationships. We approach it as though somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. It is in our homes, on our jobs, with our families, with our kids, with our parents. There is one winner and there was one loser. So we bring our A game, our best arguments, our well-crafted point of views, our ideas, Ideas, our wills, our way of doing things because the goal is to win at all costs because even in our relationships, somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. Why? Because we are a culture that is obsessed with winning and we define success professionally and relationally by our record of wins and losses. But today, we want to take a look at conflict from a different angle because if you desire to have healthy relationships that add to the quality of your life and to the people that help you to become the person that God has created you to be, it is, it is a fact, and please love me afterwards, but you cannot win every battle. And the truth is, you don't have to. Which begs the question, what makes losing so hard? What makes us so uncomfortable and even afraid of losing? I mean, why do we approach many of our conflicts and the pool and the back and forth with the goal of being undefeated and a winnable record? In fact, our text is one of the best examples because at its core, our text teaches us a culture that is defined by winning. Our text teaches us how to lose well. So today on this Super Bowl Sunday, I want to teach you how to lose. Because Isaac, Isaac in our text was the son of Abraham, the father of Jacob and Esau, and he's trying to navigate this interesting game of tug of war. Isaac is living in the land promised to him by God, and he begins to prosper so much so that his neighbors become envious and even intimidated, and it puts this conflict in motion. The Philistines hear about it and they start filling up the wells dug during the time of his father. So now Isaac moves to another place and tries to build another well and some other neighbors come and they claim that the well is there. So then he's in conflict with them. He moves on to another place and another place. All he's trying to do is provide for his family and dig some wells and at every turn he's facing some conflict. They are pulling this, this constant tug of war over the ownership of wells and, and he... He always seems to be on the losing end. In fact, when Pastor Mindy and I were talking about uh, preaching this week, we realized it was Super Bowl weekend, and I'll let you in on the text thread that happened between Pastor Mindy and I. We realized it was Super Bowl weekend, and her response was this. I hope both teams just have fun. I'm not making it up. <laughs> My response, I don't think that's the concept of playoff games. <laughs> it actually sucks really bad when you lose. <laughs> Pastor Mindy's response, oh right, not fun. <laughs> Nobody enjoys losing, regardless of the sport, 
the event, the discussion, the game, the goal. We do not like to be on the losing side of anything because at the heart of being a sore loser is an, unexpe- is an unspoken grief or expectation that has gone unacknowledged or unmet. We wanted something and didn't get it, so we're sore losers. We expected a certain outcome and it didn't happen, so losing hurts. But if we're always winning, that means that someone is constantly losing. If we're always winning, that means that someone is constantly on the other side of losing. In fact, let me prove it to you. You all seem to be very uh, participatory over here, so I'm going to need your participation. What I'm going to need is about the first five or six of you to just come and line up, and I just need you to come onto the stage. I need you to shake my hand, and then I need you to exit off. Do we got that? You got it. You were very vocal, so yeah, there you go. There you go, just come on. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Good game, 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 good game. Good game, good game, good game, good game, good game, good game. Oh, good game, good game, good game, bro. Good game, 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 good game. Isn't it easy when you're on the other side and you're winning? Isn't it, isn't it easy to, to profess and to be a good, and to be a good uh, sportsman-like or sportswoman-like? Or it's, it's easy. But what about when you're on the losing side? You see, if we're always on the winning side, that means every, everybody is always on the losing side. If you're always winning, that means somebody else is losing. If you're always winning, there's a, there's a, there's a, your, your parents, your children, your co-workers, your families, your fellow church members, if you're always winning, that means somebody in your life is always losing. That means, that means that maybe there is another perspective Because remember, the tug of war is about a constant pull of needs and desires and wishes and dreams being pulled in opposite directions. So if you are always winning with your needs and your desires and your dreams and your hopes and your expectations, that means that somebody in your life never gets their needs met never get their dreams fulfilled, their expectations, because they're always on the losing end. So here's a needed reminder. Some battles in your life are not worth fighting. In fact, we're going to get this into a bit next week because there are definitely times when we need to dig our heels in the sand and fight for certain principles. But this is not one of those for Isaac. In fact, in our marriage class here at St. Luke's, we use a book called The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work by Drs. John and Julia Gottman. And one of the chapters is geared around managing conflict. And they did some research. Watch this. They did some, I'm about to help somebody right now. I I feel help coming, right? They did some research and they followed couples. Again, this is not just about romantic relationships, but I think it applies to just any type of relationship that you're in. They did some research and followed couples over the course of several years, and they compared the content of their discussions and disagreements around the problems in their marriage from the last time they were in the lab. So they were were trying to compare what they disagreed about. And they found, here's what they found. Somebody, your your life is about, like some burdens are about to be lifted. Watch this. They found that 69% of the problems that couple discussed were the same problems They talked about the last time they were together in the lab. They concluded that the majority of the couples that that experienced these problems, the problems that they experience are perpetual problems, and these are problems that they are never going to solve. 
never even if they tried, even if they prayed about it, that they argue and discuss the same problems over and over again, year after year, they were arguing about things that they were never going to solve. Does that sound like some relationships that you are in? Right? These were perpetual problems. So they drew a distinction between problems that were perpetual and those that were solvable. Because perpetual problems are those that center either on fundamental differences in your personalities or fundamental differences in your lifestyle needs. These are things that are never going to change in your relationships. They will always be a constant tug of war with these issues. But then there are the solvable problems. Somebody say solvable. These are the ones that, that are something that's situational. And the conflict is about a topic. There may not be a deeper meaning behind it, but there's something that's solvable about the about the solution. A solution can be found and maintained. What this suggests is that every battle doesn't deserve your energy or your attention. I tried to help you. Every battle does not deserve your attention or energy because there are some places in your life that you've been fighting some battles that you are never going to win. But the question is, can you be okay with that? Can you be okay with not, lose, with, with, with not winning some battles in your life? In fact, here's what it looks like in real life. Let me show you what it looks like in real life. And I have to say this because um, I'm really questioning my relationship with some of you. Um, I'm going to tell you why. 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 Because I made some comments in worship last week that I thought could stay between you and I. But apparently, I overestimated our relationship. <laughs> True story, literally, by the time I got home, some of you in the room, out in the streets, we would say rats, but I'm just saying, but some of you in the room <laughs> had already alerted my spouse to some intimate details that we shared with each other on last Sunday. <laughs> so, in light of that, I had to do some makeup and cleanup work <laughs> because of you. So I had to text message my spouse and I needed their help in this sermon on Sunday. So I asked her for her opinion on things that I did that annoyed her. <laughs> Can I tell you what she said? And she took... <laughs> Just proof to show you I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up. I asked her. So... You see that long list? You know how on iPads you see the little dot coming? Like the dot just kept coming. So she said, number one, you don't take your shoes off in the house. Number two, she said, you snore. You get in the bed, you, you get in the bed in clothes that you wore outside and not pajamas. I mean, but what happened if I want to go back outside? You know what I mean? It's just a functional, practical decision. <laughs> Say, you kiss me without brushing your teeth. <laughs> Absolutely, right? <laughs> you say, you say, I'll do that, but never say when, and then have to be hounded to do whatever it was. <laughs> I'm guilty on that one. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. <laughs> you cook, but rarely clean as you go leaving an entire mess behind. But don't nobody in my house starve, right? <laughs> you answer the phone on speakerphone, either making us all listen to your conversation or putting me out there. <laughs> now watch this, for the record, for the record, she did not ask me my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> about things that annoy her. I'm not, uh, listen, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just telling you what happened. You don't have to go back and say nothing. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just, factually, she didn't ask me to say the same thing. 
Well, the truth is, I can tell you with absolute certainty that there are some things on her list that are absolutely never going to change. So she might as well move on. (laughs) Not to a different person, (laughs) but to a different conversation. Because there are just some perpetual problems that we might always have And as her husband, I don't want her to waste all of that energy (laughs) trying to change some things that are absolutely never going to change. See, you, you you have to choose battles, not just the ones that you want to win, but the ones that are actually able to be solved. Because so many of us We're spending so much time in our relationships on those perpetual problems. It says 69% of people spend most time trying to solve things that are never going to be solvable, which suggests that in relationships, if you're not always going to win, then you have to learn how to lose. Being in relationships with people, the, the relationships that God has sent in your life, It's not about winning, it's learning how to lose well. Because by all accounts, we can say that Isaac lost more than he's won. I mean, if we're keeping a record of his wins and losses, he's lost more than he's won. So let's let's, let's peek ahead a bit and let's see. Let's see what a loser he was. Let's see all the places that he lost. Get your pen and piece of paper out because I want you to mark down every place that he lost. He's got a losing record. He's gone from well to well, and he's lost on this side. He's lost on that side. He's lost to the Philistines. He's lost to another neighbor. He's always on the other side of losing. So let's look ahead at the text. Let's peek ahead, and let's listen to what the text says about his losing. You ready for this? Put scriptures down and says that that night the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid for I'm with you. I will bless you, Isaac, and will increase. I will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of your father Abraham. Listen to it. He's lost. He's got a losing record. He's on the the other side of winning, and the Lord says, I will bless you and increase the number. Sounds like he lost a whole lot, doesn't it? So let's keep peeking. You still writing down? Let's keep peeking. Because a few more verses down, some of the same people that he's had a hard time with, they saw how God was moving in his life, and they returned to apologize for their behavior and then they make a covenant to live in peace with him. They eat, they toss a few back, and then they leave peacefully. Do you see all that he lost? Do you see all that he lost? You see, when the hand of God is on your life, you don't have to fight over one well. When the hand of God is over your life, you don't have to fight over one argument. The Lord says, listen, I will... I was blessing you. I will keep blessing you. I'll increase the number of your descendants. And the people that he was in conflict with, they saw how the Lord was moving, and then they come back, and then they want to be in relationship with him. When the hand of God is on your life, you don't have to fight over one well. You can lose gracefully and sometimes willingly because you have a much bigger picture of what God is doing in your life and through that particular relationship, which means... The faith is a journey that requires us to learn how to lose well. Because it's hard to live as faithful disciples and always be on the winning side. It's hard hard to maintain a healthy, mutual, beneficial relationship that adds to the quality of your life without losing sometimes. Walking with God will require you to lose. Listen to what Jesus says about losing in a culture that is obsessed with winning. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus says, truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it will remain a seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus says, whoever finds his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. 
Jesus says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Peter says, Jesus, we have left everything to follow you. They've always been on the losing side. But Jesus challenges our narrow perceptions of winning and losing. Because Isaac is certainly not playing in anyone's Super Bowl because he has a losing record. And yet the Lord continues to add to his life. He has built the wells that he needed, and he came away with more relationships than when he started. So was it his desire to win, or was it his willingness to lose? So here's the question I want to leave you with. How was God challenging you to redefine the definition of winning in your life? How is God challenging you to redefine the definitions of winning in your faith, in your relationships, at home, at work, with kids, with parents, with family members? Is it always to win all of the time? Or could there be something successful and something fruitful when you are sometimes on the losing side. So listen, I hope you still love me, but listen, you can't win every battle. But with God, you don't have to. Because there can be something divine and blessed even when you're on the losing side. You don't have to win them all. Why don't you pray with me? God, is easier said than done. Because we're fighters. We've been, we, we, we've, been, we've been trained to win at everything. For we ask of you, to keep in mind those people in our lives who need a win. Who in our lives need a win? Could it be somebody that you have placed in our lives and while we've been so, so busy trying to, trying to get our needs and, and everything else met, that there's, that there's somebody that's, that's struggling, there's somebody that we're in relationship with, they just need a win. And maybe our losing gives them the hope that God still loves them. Maybe our surrendering plants a seed in their minds that God still wants to bless them in their lives, that God is still a provider, that God is still a way maker. So God, maybe, maybe in this season, maybe in this season you're calling us to surrender because our lives with you, it's a, it's a win-win situation. regardless of what the record is. When you place us around people in our lives that are for us and with us, we can't lose. It's a win-win situation. So continue to bless us and continue to speak into our lives because surrendering is easier said than done. In Christ's name we pray.